Isn't it amazing? It's It's a beautiful sunny sky out there, and it's so cool. I think I need a ski jacket. It dropped below 75. I'm a true Floridian now. (laughs) Um, I want to welcome everybody that's here and everybody that's joining us virtually, worshiping with us over live stream and YouTube. Uh, We are all here worshiping God together. Uh, God is the audience, and we are the actors bringing this act of worship to the Lord. So uh, isn't it great that we get to do this? Uh, We have a few announcements today, and I will leave those to Reverend Jesse Higginbotham. Good morning, everyone. It's a... Isn't it interesting to look out and see that blue sky after the week we had? Just... It always uh, blows my mind right after we have a big storm like that, how the beautiful days that follow. Um, I know you all are wondering, and I know you all have been asking, um, so I have some um, temporary information for you about Presbyterian Disaster Assistance and helping um, relief for Hurricane Ian. Uh, Cherie made a slide for it, and she might be able to get it up for me while I talk, um, and she might not. That's okay. No pressure. Um, If you would like to donate to Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, which assists people after disasters. The uh, phone number is coming. Um, It's uh, 1-800-872-3283. I will have all this information for you in the bulletin next week. There it is. Um, This is the website you can go to right now, and this is a QR code that you can scan with your phone right now if you want to donate or get more information. Keep in mind that Presbyterian Disaster Assistants are not first responders, so they do not consider themselves to be the first boots on the ground. They tend to be in the second or third wave of assistance, but they do have this set up on their website right now, so anything that you donate, you can designate to go towards um, relief. Uh, Will and I and the kids rode off of Sanibel Island on um, Saturday, and um, I'm getting goosebumps saying it. Um, I mean, the pictures, I can't, I can't even believe. I, I, I'm devastated, and I'm shocked, shocked. Um, so we all know, and I'm not the only, we are not the only ones who vacation there in this congregation. I know several of families who go there as well, so I know that Um, We all care deeply about that area and what's uh, going on. And so, again, I'll have this information printed for you in the bulletin. But if you'd like to call during the week and get it, I'm happy to provide it for you um, anytime. So we definitely are sending our thoughts and our prayers and our love to that area of our state um, as they look. It is 1-800-872-3283. Did I? Oh, did I? Sorry, it should be 872. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'll have that inf- If you need, I'll, I'll make, double check it right now as soon as we start singing, and then I will have that information for you. Um, <clears throat> Lakeside Junior High will be having a choral concert here on the 13th at 7 p.m. Come and... Uh, join in with the fun of Lakeside Junior High. Also, um, copies of the October church calendar are in the narthex if you'd like to grab one. And any uh, changes that are made to that calendar, you'll receive either via email or text during the week. And I've noticed that we got it from Shelby this week. Uh, I got it, and um, yeah, everything's looking great. Um, Excuse me, I do have a cold. It's just a cold. I took a COVID test, I promise. Um... Wednesday, join us Wednesday for dinner and entertainment or just hanging out and being together Wednesday at 5.30 this week for dinner, youth group as well. Um, Can't wait. Let's do our call to worship. Write the vision. Make it plain for all to see. Let us worship God. Will you stand and join me and the praise band in our opening song?
Okay, the phone number for Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is 1-800-872-3283. No problem. I must have transposed it when I typed it out for Cherie. <clears throat> Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, you have sent us all here today to praise and worship and gather in your name. We ask that you might bless our time together and that you might open our hearts and minds to your word and your ways. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. special message for our children this morning. I want to talk to you about meals. Now, let's do a quick survey. Who calls the meal that you eat after 5 p.m.? If you're at our house, it's 5.30. We know we eat early. Some people eat very late. What do you call that meal? How, who calls it dinner? You used to? Okay, when you lived up north. Okay, now, who calls it supper? Yeah, my grandparents call it supper. Um, what do you, yeah, what do you call it up north? Ripas, ripas. Oh, it's supper if it's a small meal. Oh, I never heard that before. Okay, so my grandparents, when I was growing up, and then, and then who call, what do you call the meal that you eat around noon? Okay, does anybody call it dinner? My grandparents used to call it, called it, that meal was dinner, <clears throat> and then the meal at, after 5 p.m. was supper. Right. We'd come home from my grandparents' house confused out of our minds, and we were children. <laughs> what a meal are we eating? All right, now, here's the fun one. What do you call the meal that you have if you're eating pancakes for dinner? What do you call that? <laughs> Breakfast for dinner? Good, yeah, right, good at our house. I call it Will's Night to Cook. Um, he's fine, he laughed, he thought it was funny. Come on, he's fine. You guys, he knows me pretty well, he can handle it. Um, we call it Brenner. Breakfast for dinner, Brenner. <clears throat> you know, because you call that meal that you have around 10 o'clock after <clears throat> After seven, before noon, you call that brunch. So, get it? Brinner. All right. We all call a lot of meals a lot of different things. And apparently, it's depending on where you're from. I didn't know that. Um, up north, I remember I went to New York with some friends one time, and um, we were staying in this beautiful hotel. We were downtown. We were in Manhattan. And um, we got to the hotel after we had gone and seen a show, and I said, ooh. Let's do what the New Yorkers do. Let's order dinner at 9 p.m. And um, that, you got, yeah, Will's from New York. People do that. They eat at like 9 p.m. And I couldn't, I, I thought it was just so novel and cute. Um, well, we do have a meal together here every month. We do it once a month on the first Sunday of the month. And we have our own name for it. We don't call it dinner. We don't call it lunch. We don't call it brunch, although I guess we could call it brunch because it's kind of brunch. It's not very, um, it's not actually physically very filling, although I don't eat breakfast on days we do communion, so that, because I, because Kathy lets me have the leftovers. Um, but we call it communion. Now, where does that name come from? Well, communion simply means community, together, something we do together. And in our church, you might not know this, but we practice what's called open communion. And that means that anybody who wants to take this meal can take it. We don't check IDs at the table. Um, we don't ask any questions about who you are, where you're from, have you ever been to a Presbyterian church, were you 
uh, we had someone in my uh, previous church who was raised uh, Jewish and was still practicing, and he would take communion, and we didn't, I mean, I don't care. Um, we don't ask if you've been baptized or if you're old enough. You can be a child, you can be an adult, you can be from the Catholic Church. Uh, we let you Catholics in. Um, we, you can be from the Presbyterian Church your entire life, like Tim Wilson. Um, or you can just simply be visiting with us here today. So this is the meal for everybody. Doesn't matter if it's at 10 a.m. or Brenner, or what you all are going to start calling that meal. You know you are. Um, or brunch or lunch or supper, whatever it is, anybody can take this meal with us when we do it today. So this is the most special of meals because there's no dietary restrictions, although there are, but we take care of that for you. There's no rules. Just come and have a meal with us and enjoy yourselves. So when we do communion today, I don't know if anybody's visiting with us. I didn't do a survey this morning, but if you are, you're welcome. If you have a child with you, you're welcome. If you've done this meal a hundred million times, you're also welcome to do it one more time. I do also want to tell you that uh, the bread is homemade, which is fun, and that's special, and we love that. We used to get it from Publix. In my, actually, we used to use um, tortillas in my previous church. That was very strange and not very appetizing. Um, I, they could easily be cut with a, a pizza cutter. That was the thinking behind that. Um, Will you stand and join me in singing our first hymn this morning? <clears throat> If supper is a smaller meal, the last supper was a small meal. So that's probably where that comes from. Ooh. Probably is a strong word. You're probably the only one to make that connection. Will you remain standing for our time of confession together? <clears throat> our faith may be small, but God's power is great. Our sins may loom large, but God's promise of forgiveness is sure. Trusting that God is able to do for us what we could never do for ourselves, let us make our confession together. God of grace, we confess that the seed of faith within us is small. Hope is often absent. Love is frequently inconvenient. Our sin keeps us from responding to you. Tend to us in mercy, so that we may grow in the ways of faith, 
hope, and love after the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of God is given to us in Jesus Christ. This is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat>
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you give us your holy scriptures, that they've been with us for many centuries now, and yet you still speak to us through them. Every time we read them, we hear something new. God, bless the words we're about to hear so that they might have meaning for us in our worship of you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have three passages. We have, uh, we have my favorite psalm. I, like to, I love to do this to Tim Wilson. He's like, every psalm is your favorite. Um, <clears throat> well, they, they kind of are, you know, check me at different times. Uh, but today, Psalm 37 is my favorite, <laughs> this part of it we're going to read. Um, and, uh, uh, and we're also going to read from uh, Tim Likes the Minor Prophets. I don't know why I'm picking on Tim, maybe because it's fun and because he gives back, you know, as good as he gets. Um, and uh, so we're hearing from Habakkuk or Habakkuk or check with Sylvia. She knows how to say it correctly, <laughs> but it's one of those minor prophets. And then, of course, we're going to pick up at Luke. There's some puzzling words in Luke today in chapter 17, and uh, you'll get to hear those in just a moment. So first, the prophet Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you, violence, and you will not come and save Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble, God? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. But I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me what he will answer concerning my complaint. And then the Lord answered me, and the Lord said, Write the vision down, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end, and it does not lie. If it seems to tarry, then you need to wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous, well, the righteous live by faith. Let us count ourselves among the righteous. And now Psalm 37. These are just the first nine verses. I encourage you to go home and read the other 31 verses. They're very cool, too, but we have time for nine. (laughs) Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass. They will wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so that you will live in the land and enjoy security in the land. Take delight in the Lord. And the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will act on your behalf. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still. Be quiet before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil, all of this fretting, all of this anxiety, any of this fear. It only leads in the direction you don't want to go. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. And now Luke 17, 5 through 10. This is a chapter in Luke that has a, a sort of a several sayings from Jesus all thrown together into one chapter. Um, we're reading these six verses. 
Listen for the word of the Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith, Lord. And the Lord replied to them, If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to the person that is the employed, the person that works for you, in this case the slave, the servant, would you not rather say to them, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Then later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, should respond, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Now, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you today. It's been a week of seeking refuge, hasn't it? A week of seeking shelter. It's been very rough. Our friends in southwest Florida got hit the hardest. And uh, as Jesse noted, some of you have been there. He just recently just got back from Sanibel Island, which doesn't really exist, not in the way that we know it anymore, in Fort Myers Beach. Uh, it's been very sad to hear the stories. There will be opportunities uh, for you to give. If you haven't already started giving through disaster agencies, um, we might even make a trip down there, those of us that are willing and able, um, when it's appropriate to go and help rebuild. Seeking shelter. You have that Rolling Stones song in the back of your head. The one Red Cross used it for a while, remember? Give me, give me shelter. <laughs> shelter. Seeking refuge. You know, every month we come here and we take communion, and I say at the very beginning, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who find their refuge in Him. And we think about it in terms of uh, a dwelling place, a home. I even say it that way sometimes. Do you find your home in the Lord? But another way, and perhaps a better way to think about it, especially right now in this time and space that we're living in, and the way it gets translated in Eugene Peterson's version of the Bible, which is a very well-educated translation, it's not off the mark in any way, is to run to God. Refuge in the sense of shelter, like we've been talking about just now. Don't walk, but run. Where do I run? To shelter. Where do I find the shelter? In God. Finding refuge in God. Think about a time in your life when you needed to find shelter. It may have been when you were hiking somewhere in the out of doors. It may have been when you needed to get away from a difficult situation that you found yourself living in. You needed to change places quickly. It may be when you were on a trip. It might be when you were at home. It might be when you were on Blanding and just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Luckily, there's parking lots that you can pull off in and chill out. In fact, that's one of the words that gets translated in the psalm. And when we talk about waiting for the Lord to be silent before the Lord, the word is related to don't get overheated. In other words, be cool. If you find yourself not being cool, then you need to take a little break. And it's okay to give yourself that shelter I like to go sailing offshore. Now, when is it a bad time to go sailing offshore? Hurricane. During a hurricane. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it might be puzzling, but some of these Navy vessels, they leave during the hurricane so they don't get bashed around. Am I right, uh, men and women that have served? Yeah, they go out. My cousin, my cousin-in-law, I like to call him a cousin. I've promoted him because he's such a good cousin-in-law. 
but he served in the Navy for many years, and he loves to tell this story about the, uh, the purser, the, um, what do you call it in the Navy, the, you know, the person that takes care of all the supplies. Um, it is the purser, right? Okay, yeah. So the, the purser was working especially hard through that long time out at sea, and he turned his head this way, and Art saw not one, not two, but 16 scopalamine patches all down the side of his neck because it was so rough out there. But they had to go out, and they were safer, but it was a miserable 24 to 36 hours. Scopalamine patches can be your friend. Take a Dramamine before you get on a boat like that. <laughs> or if you're subject to seasickness, take a, Dram take a Dramamine the night before. Why am I giving you this advice? Because it's solid. <laughs> it works. Take it the night before. Then you won't be quite as sleepy when you take that one just before you step ship, step foot on the ship. I went down to St. Augustine on the boat. It's been several months ago now, so the fear is gone. <laughs> but I went on the Intracoastal Waterway, which is really cool because you get to see all those fancy homes in Ponte Vedra on this side, and you look on this side, and it's like a beautiful natural sanctuary. And then you look back over here at homes that you'll never be able to afford, or you probably won't even be invited to set foot in, but it's nice for the first mile or two or three. But you get about five miles into it, and you're like, I'm bored of looking at other people's wealth. And I wonder why they have so much wealth. And I start to thinking, why do the wicked prosper like the person in Psalm 37? Oh, Lord, why do they prosper? And when you read that, what he's really asking is, why do good things happen to bad people instead of the other way around? It's a silly question. Because I have no idea. They might be wonderful people, and they've prospered well, and they have the home on this side going down that way. So anyway, I got down there to St. Augustine, and I stayed for the night. And it's nice because you can just walk right off of where you keep the boat, and you can have coffee. You can go to St. George Street. It's a wonderful time to spend there in St. Augustine. And then it was time to go back. And I checked the weather, and it was a little better, except they were calling for intermittent squalls. And I asked the kid that works there at the dock, I said, what do you think that means, intermittent squalls? And he's like, that's no big deal. They're just intermittent. I would go anyway. So I did. I said, I don't want to look at those houses again on this side as I go back up through the intracoastal waterway. So I went out into the ocean, and there was some stuff out there. There was some gray stuff here, and there was some things falling out of the sky there, and there was a lightning bolt over here. And I thought, maybe I should turn around. But they're just intermittent, so I kept going. And I got on out another mile, two, five, six. I was six and a half miles out. And I had a little bit too much sail up. You're always supposed to reef the sails before the wind gets there, not after. And the wind came. It was weird. I looked up at the little thingy that goes like this, you know, the wind indicator. And it was going hmm, this way, and then it was that way. And it was registering two, three miles an hour, something like that. Two or three knots. And it was unsettled. And then it went to 30. <clears throat> And then, and then the boat was leaning a little bit, or you might say a lot. It was leaning over this way, and I was making really good speed in a direction that I had no control over. <laughs> yeah, never should have listened to that kid at the dock. <laughs> this is what it means to be in a squall. And the wind wasn't just one way. Did you go out and look? Did you have any good wind indicators? I did during the hurricane at least the edge of it that we got that came by here. And it's, it's gusty, yes, and it can cause a lot of damage, but it's also, it's confused wind. It's coming from several different directions. It'll gust this way and then gust from that way. And that's no fun sailing in that. <laughs> it's very chaotic. And I found myself not wanting to walk, but wanting to run to shelter. I practice as much safety as I can well, I could have done some more safety stuff. But, you know, I stayed in the cockpit. I waited it out. I did manage to reef the sails after a while, and I just had to ride it until it slowed down. That squall passed, and there was another one right behind it. I'd learned my lesson. I turned, and I went just as fast as that little diesel will push. Have you guys ever seen a sailboat racing? 
I mean, I know they got these new fancy ones that will foil and fly along. This is not that kind. A regular sailboat, yeah. It was going like five miles an hour. <laughs> Back in, against the tide now, trying to get to shelter. I ran as fast as I could go to get back into shelter. It was only about 1.30 or 2 p.m. by the time I got back in. I tucked in right there under the Volano Bridge. You know what I'm talking about? Right behind Volano Beach, before you ever get up to caps on the water. I dropped the anchor, and I called it a day. <laughs> it was around 2 p.m., and I think I slept. <laughs> what do you do when you need to seek shelter? Where do you go when you need to seek shelter? Where have you been in shelter before? Where have you found refuge? And what I'm suggesting to you today is that there is a better refuge that you can always go to at any time. And I was already in there during the storm. You can go to the shelter that is God. You can make God your refuge. You can run to the presence of God. And you can say, I'm going to have faith that just like you said from the psalmist and just like you said in Habakkuk, that you will protect me, that you have things in hand. And when I look around and see things that I think are not right, I'm not going to be dismayed and discouraged but I'm going to take just a little half of a mustard seed of faith because I don't have enough faith to move a mulberry tree yet. But if I can have a half of a mustard seed of faith, I can know in my heart that things are going to be okay. And that sinking sense of discouragement, that sinking sense of dismay that comes sometimes in the middle of the night for no good reason, and it's dark and I can't push it away quick enough, but it takes over. I can say, no, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to have this fear and anxiety. I'm going to live in the victory that you promised that comes from finding refuge in you. And the psalmist says, and Habakkuk says, wait on the Lord. And I was reminded in Bible study this week that waiting is more powerful than hope. I said, well, aren't they just kind of the same thing? Just little versions of the same sort of phenomenon there? They said, no, no, no. Waiting is based in true assurance, evidence that God's going to do what God says. When I wait for something, I'm saying and making a faith statement that it is coming. And I have an idea of what it looks like. And I'm going to recognize it when it gets here. God has promised good to you. God has promised good to you. I'm not making this up. It's in the Bible. God has promised good to you. And if right now is not exactly what you would call good, then you can wait. Indeed, with hope. But the waiting is even more powerful. You can wait with the half a mustard seed of faith and know that God is working things out. And that silence, it says, be still before the Lord, is our gift. The stillness itself is our assurance that things are going to be okay. Oh, it's quiet tonight. And you hear from all of those movies, especially those World War I movies. Yeah, too quiet. <laughs> it's never too quiet. In that quietness, in that stillness, God speaks. And you can begin to know not the fear and dismay and discouragement, not the fretting. They kept saying, do not fret, do not fret, right? You ever catch yourself fretting? What does fretting look like? They don't say, don't be afraid. They call it fretting. Fretting's this kind of, uh, isn't it? It's a little bit, it's, it's got some of this in it. <laughs> it's not still. <laughs> it's moving anxiety, right? anxious and fretting around. Do not fret. I don't have to fret anymore. I could be still because God said so. And Jesus says, not only that, but you shall become, you can become, you need to become like a servant of, not a servant of some harsh master, 
but a servant of the Lord who loves you. When I become humble enough and know myself to be a servant of the Lord, then I will be like the slaves that he was talking about in this story, in this passage. When I show the loyalty to God, it will be rewarded. When I have a question in my mind, let me respond with loyalty to God. Let me respond with assurance. And I'll exercise just a half a mustard seed of faith. Friends, may you find the shelter, may you find refuge in God in this moment and in every moment of your lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Our prayers of the people today are a responsive prayer, and we have some that have been shared with us over the, the, this, this tool, this magic of the Internet that we use. And there will also be an opportunity for you to say silent prayers that are on your heart. Um, and the response, when I say God our Savior, if you would respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our Savior, we trust in your power to deliver us, God. We ask that you would give us that faith, that little bit of faith that Jesus talks about. And we know that you hear our prayers of intercession. So we pray for the church. Teach us to trust in your saving power and to rely on the gifts of your Holy Spirit, to be bold in our testimony to the Lord. O oh God, our Savior, we pray for the world, Lord. Give us leaders who are committed to doing what is just and what is right so that all may live in peace and in safety. O oh God, our Savior, we pray for this community, Lord. Restore, God, restore our abandoned cities. Restore our... Our, our hurt and demolished beach communities and other sections of Florida and other states that were damaged by this hurricane. God, we ask that you would rebuild and help us to be a part of rebuilding these neighborhoods that are broken. We ask that you would also renew broken relationships. Oh God, our Savior, Lord, we pray for loved ones today. Comfort those who are suffering, those who feel as though they are wasting away in sorrow. Sustain them with your steadfast love. God, we pray today for Barbara Booth, a friend of Judy Snyder's who suffered a heart attack. We pray for Kathy Kleist's sister, Annette, who has been moved to an assisted living facility. She's able to walk short distances and maneuver in a wheelchair on her own. God, we pray for Beverly Elliott, who is recovering from surgery. And we pray for all the people in Southwest and South Florida, those who have been affected by Hurricane Ian. God, may they find a spiritual shelter in you and may we be a part of helping to get them back the shelters that they have lost God we pray for um, Chip Paulman and Paula Bertless for Chuck Calloway for Bev Rogers for Deb Stewart and Larry Adams God, we're grateful to see Doris Irvin with us today. And we pray for those also who are mourning at this time. All those that have lost loved ones in the last few weeks, months. God, may your spirit of comfort be with them. Almighty God, we now raise individuals and situations that are on our hearts to you in silent prayer.
O oh God, our Savior, merciful and mighty God, as you are one, we ask that you would make us one with you through Jesus Christ, who you sent to redeem us, in whose holy name we pray, and also by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who run to God. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, our hearts are open to you. Our desires are known to you. And there is nothing that we can hide from you. Help us now receive this sacrament in faith and hear us as we celebrate being your creatures. Express, your <clears throat> express our gratitude for these your gifts of love and praise your holiness in these words. Bless you, great God, that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, <coughs> gave thanks for it, and broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. I took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of God's covenant of love with you. Drink this in memory of me. Eternal God, by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, may this bread and this juice become Christ's life in us now, and a foretaste of your eternal life. By the renewing power of your Spirit, May we discover the beauty and joy of fellowship with you and with one another. May all that we say and do reflect the Lord of our lives. May our sharing and tasting acclaim your glory, creator, savior, power of love. Hear us now as we say the words Christ taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So then, following our Lord's example, we take, the, we take the bread as he did, and we break it. And he said to the disciples, this is my life given for you. In a similar way, after they had eaten, he took a cup and he poured a full pitcher of wine into the cup till the cup was full. And he said, this cup is the cup of God's covenant of love with you. Whenever you drink it, do so remembering me. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you take away the sin of the world. Through Jesus Christ, you set us free to live life abundant. Through Jesus Christ, you reveal to us your love. Friends, take and eat. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ is with all of us. Let us pray. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves to our brothers. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. We are going to affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, hymn number 32, I sing the mighty power of God. Let us sing together. can be God is present there they say wherever you go there you are and God's there with you let us not forget that may the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion and power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always amen mm -hmm. 